Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Roughly this time last week, I put together the smallest gaming PC I've ever built using this sleek looking Inwin Chopin. Overall, it was an awesome little PC featuring the Ryzen 5 2400G, which allows for respectable performance at 1080p in competitive titles such as Overwatch and Fortnite, for example. The 2400G is an unlocked part and uses R3 to overclock not just the CPU, but also the GPU, and this can boost gaming performance by around 10% for that particular model. Not earth shattering gains, but for entry level hardware, every bit helps. AMD's box cooler, the Wraith Stealth, allows things to get a little too toasty when overclocking, so I picked up the Cryorig C7 instead and just assumed that that would be better. I wasn't assuming that it would be a significant improvement over the box cooler, but enough to allow for a decent overclock. Sadly though, the C7 allowed the 2400G to get quite hot, and I was surprised by how loud it was. It was really quite ridiculous, and it seemed much louder than the box cooler, and I wasn't convinced the temperatures were really all that improved, so I decided to investigate. Having reported the operating temperatures with the C7, as well as recording the operating volume, I swapped it out for the Wraith Stealth. Now, to fit the box cooler into the show pan, you need to remove the plastic shroud on the top of the fan. So, not the fan shroud, just the little decorative piece on the top with the AMD branding. Behind the AMD branding are two small screws. Remove those and then the decorative plastic bit just clips off. It's pretty quick and easy to remove and doing so won't impact performance in any way. The Wraith Stealth now fits perfectly snug inside the show pan. Now, just a quick recap. The Cryorig C7 allowed for a peak operating temperature of 57 degrees in F1 2017, which is actually quite good, really. That said, we did see temperatures hit 78 degrees when running our Blender workload. Although that's an acceptable temperature, it doesn't really allow much headroom or really any headroom for overclocking. For reference, previously when using the Deepcool Gamax 200T, we were able to keep the temperatures under 70 degrees at all times with the APU overclocked to the max. So I was pretty disappointed with the C7 last week when I tested it for this build for the first time. However, now that I've gone and tested the Wraith Stealth box cooler under the same conditions, I've adjusted my opinion, well, kind of. <laughs> Running F1 2017 again with the Wraith Stealth, we now see the temperature peak at 61 degrees, which is four degrees warmer than that of the C7. So it's not a huge difference, but more than that one to two degrees I had in mind. However, it's the blender test where temps really creep up, and here the Wraith Stealth allowed the 2400G to hit 86 degrees, and that's 8 degrees hotter than the C7, and, well, that's obviously quite significant. That said, there's also the issue of the operating volume, and as I noted earlier, the C7 seemed a lot louder, and I noted that in last week's video as well. Turns out I wasn't imagining this. Here's some unaltered audio samples of how loud the show pan is using each cooler. Please note the mic was positioned exactly three feet from the PC and the fan was directly facing the mic. Also, for best results, it's probably worth putting on some headphones. So, as I thought, the Cryorig C7 is much louder than the Wraith Stealth box cooler. Even at idle, the results are surprising, and this is really probably what shocked me most about the C7. Whereas the Wraith Stealth is virtually silent at idle, you can clearly hear the C7. Then when gaming, the box cooler can still be heard, but it really isn't that annoying. Now, the C7, though, it is significantly louder, and it generates a very annoying high pitch sound. Then for our Blender workload, the Wraith Stealth Max is out at around 2000 RPM, and with the fan spinning this fast, you can clearly hear it, but it's not really annoyingly loud in my opinion. The C7 though, that is now spinning at 2700 RPM, and it's significantly louder than the box cooler, and for me, it's just unacceptably loud. Personally, I wouldn't want to be living with this thing. 
So although the C7 reduced the 2400G's operating temperature by 8 degrees when running our blender workload, the increased operating volume really isn't worth the headache in my opinion. Not only that, but with a higher RPM fan, you'd no doubt achieve the same results with the race stealth anyway. And likewise, you could probably limit the C7's fan speed, but then what's the point of spending $30 US or $50 Australian on a cooler that is really no better than what came bundled with the CPU for free? In conclusion though, the C7 really isn't as bad as I thought it was this time last week. At the time, I was assuming thermal performance would be much the same as the Race Stealth, which is obviously a bad thing given it makes a lot more noise. Truth is though, it is better than that, but overall still not really that much better than the Race Stealth box cooler, because when you account for the extra volume, their extra thermal performance really is kind of offset by that. So Raven Ridge APU owners really stand to gain nothing by investing in the C7. And given that it increases the total cost of the 2400G by almost 20%, I'd recommend you keep your money. And well, that's gonna do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, then please hit the like button, subscribe for more content. If you appreciate the work we do here at Harbour Unbox, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. 